Imagine you're five years old, you're sitting in the back of your parents' minivan when all of a sudden your mom or dad takes a sharp turn onto a dirt road and into the woods you go. Imagine if there was a minivan that was produced with four-wheel drive. Hey everyone, welcome to Slay Automotive Art. My name is Garrett and in this week's Wagoneer Wednesday video, let's talk about Jeep's vision to dominate the four-wheel drive market in the 1980s. Please subscribe for Wagoneer Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Follow my 1986 Jeep Grand Wagoneer project and drop a comment down below on what color I should paint this thing. After I finish up all the bodywork, I'm really hoping I can paint this vehicle this summer. So make sure you subscribe, follow along, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Now let's get into it. Ah, the minivan. It was all the rage in the 1980s and 1990s, but before we can draw that picture, there was quite a bit of development that went into the making of the minivan. Around the 1960s, automakers offered large vans for big, busy families. Many automakers offered a third row, family-friendly version of their cargo van. However, majority of families sprung for the low-to-the-ground boat of a station wagon. By the 1970s, few automakers had the thoughts of furthering the idea of making the big cargo van with a third row seat more than just an afterthought. The idea was to design a van that was tailored to growing families. A vehicle that wasn't a big, large cargo van or truck. A vehicle you could park at home in the garage. A vehicle that wasn't just an afterthought of a cargo van. In 1972, Ford introduced the Ford Carousel minivan concept vehicle. This vehicle was a derivative of the third generation Ford Econo line with the goal of this vehicle serving as an alternative to full-size station wagons and passenger vans. In 1972, Ford designers were given the green light to work on what was called the Nantucket Design Program. It was the codename for the 1975 Econoline Club Wagon. Moving its engine several inches forward increased passenger space. However, with its staggered 7-foot height, its large size decreased functionality as a personal, family-oriented vehicle, making it difficult to pass clearance through an average garage door opening. Enter automotive legend Lee Iacocca, president of the Ford Motor Company. He directed the Ford Light Truck Design Studio to create a quote-unquote garbageable van. That was a little bit of a tongue twister there. Based on the Nantucket design program, the codename Carousel was given. Lowering the roof one foot and giving the vehicle more car-like styling, Ford's hope was to capture the eyes of growing families. The Carousel minivan concept vehicle was intended for marketing to buyers of full-size station wagons and passenger vans. It was based off the third generation Econoline wagon, like I said. It had a 124 inch wheelbase, the standard wheelbase length for the Econoline 1975-78 model year vehicles. It was designed with a height lower than the 6 foot 4 inch VW Microbus, a huge competitor at the time and it used the Econoline's 460 cubic inch V8 and Ford's C6 three-speed automatic transmission. It could hold five passengers. It had a flat folding rear seat to match the height of the load floor. It had several configurations that were designed, including a two rear bench seat and side facing perimeter seats, front captain's chairs, and to attract buyers, the roof line was styled with glass. And to finish it all off, it was fitted in wood grain, and the rear door was equipped with a tailgate and retracting rear window. Ultimately, after the 1973 energy crisis and the recession of the mid-1970s, Ford had no choice but to cut back on the new vehicle development. Henry Ford II called the end of the carousel project in 1974. By 1978, the Blue Oval had called it quits with automotive genius Lee Iacocca due to product development and management disagreements. Butting heads with Henry Ford II, he was let go on July 13th of 1978, taking his business to one of Ford's biggest competitors, Chrysler. Chrysler at the time was on the verge of bankruptcy, selling its Chrysler Europe division to Peugeot in an effort to generate some cash. The company had been losing millions in North America due to recalls on their Dodge Aspen, 
and Plymouth Bolaer, both of which Iacocca stating were major factors to Chrysler's customer dissatisfaction. He then started his long journey of rebuilding the company from the ground up. He also brought in many former Ford associates. Spotting an upcoming trend in the automotive industry was no difficult task for Iacocca. With the fire in his eyes for the minivan project, Iacocca continued to bring the Minimax project to life, thus introducing the 1984 Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager to the world in 1983. Great gas mileage, shorter than a full-size station wagon, and the ability to seat seven adults, plus the fact that there hasn't been any other vehicle made quite like this before, made Chrysler a sales success. Now, let's wind the clocks back to the mid-80s when Jeep was owned by American Motors Corporation before being bought out by Chrysler in 1987. So during the 1980s when the Jeep brand was owned by American Motors Corporation, the idea of a Jeep minivan was tossed around quite a few times. This first one on screen, there's no specific date on when this sketch was originally created, however, this was a strong contender in Jeep's decision to push a minivan into their brand. Just looking at the overall appearance of this minivan, you can see the seven slot grille up front. The ride height of this vehicle is relatively high and it has big four x four badges, probably on both sides of the vehicle. The body is looking very sleek for the 80s. There's huge glass windows all around and it looks like up top there's two lights, probably for off-roading purposes. I mean, this thing looks pretty cool, and if I was a kid growing up in the 80s, I would be more than happy to ride in this thing and go off-roading. What do you think about this first prototype? This next prototype sketch has a little bit more information attached to it. In my opinion, it's not really the best-looking vehicle out there. It doesn't have the iconic Jeep 7-slot grille up front. However, it has a very sleek design going for it. It sits very low and it doesn't really even look like it has a rear sliding door. This sketch has a date on it, August 10th of 1986. This prototype was drawn out by Bob Nixon, a Jeep designer at AMC, and he called it the Jeep Skate. It was a four-wheel drive minivan that could hold five passengers. Do you think it would have been a good idea for the Jeep brand to have their own minivan? Comment down below. Let me know what you think about these thoughts and the concept vehicles. So ultimately, the Jeep brand ended up tossing the idea of making a four-wheel drive minivan, probably due to the fact that it just wouldn't fit in their product portfolio. Let me know down in the comments if you have any other ideas on why the Jeep brand never made a four-wheel drive minivan. Here are a couple questions I like to consider when I'm making one of these videos on concept vehicles. These are determining factors on whether or not the concept would have made it into production. What would the engineering costs look like? What is the competitive advantage in the competition? How much market share would this vehicle take up? Who is this vehicle for and what's its intended market? What kind of price point would this vehicle be offered at? Now, a little bit of quick interesting information that I found out about the Jeep brand. In the 1970s, Jeep offered their FC truck line of vehicles. And although they didn't offer a cargo van or a passenger van built off of the truck, they certainly did toss around the idea. Some sketches were drawn out and three hand-built prototypes were made. Where these prototypes exactly are today are unknown. I think this thing looks pretty cool and if Jeep would have made this, I think it would have been a home run and quite the antique to have today. What do you think about this old thing? If you'd like to see more Jeep prototype videos, go on over to the channel or go down below. There'll be a playlist of other really cool, never-before-seen Jeep prototype videos. Thanks so much for watching my video. Check out this one here next.